Okay, welcome back students who are taking the Math for Business and Finance and Math applications, and this is the second video for Chapter 16, How to Read, Analyze, and Interpret Financial Reports. Um, before I jump into the uh, first bullet, bulleted item uh, from the overview, um, uh, between while I was saving the other video, the thought did occur to me, um, realize that I'm an accountant. Okay, I have my degree in accounting. Um, I've worked in a regional account, uh, a CPA firm as an accounting software consultant. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm I'm well set in the accounting ways. Okay, um, but and and the whole purpose behind these videos, you know, like why am I doing the drill problems and the the word problems and the summary practice test problems? Um, was to try to show you what goes through my mind and do the problems as if I was a student. Okay, and when it comes to these theory videos, realize that um, you know, you know, I could have just been flipping page to page to page and regurgitating what's in the book. Okay, and but instead, I have a tendency to, uh, you know, by no, by all means, you have to read the textbook. I mean, that's the assigned material. This is supplemental, and I'm. Whatever I say and do in these videos is to help get a better understanding of the subject matter, you know, based upon my perspective, the way I've learned things, you know, my knowledge base. So as I go through this, realize that some of this stuff is not going to be in the book, all right, but hopefully it helps with what's in the book because it brings additional insights um, to that material. And the issue here also is as to what level we're, we're talking about. Now remember, we're talking about high level, you know, first year stuff. We're not talking about in depth, I'm an accountant in my junior year stuff, okay? Um, and as we move on to our first slide here, um, you'll understand why I just said what I said. So. Um, the, the title of this slide is, is why financial reports slash statements, you know, the report card for a company. Now, remember, um, the book talks about financial reports. I use statements, you know, interchangeably with the word report. So you're always going to hear me say financial statements and not reports. And so it's a report card for a company, right? Why are financial statements a report card for the company? All right. Now, I hear a lot of times uh, before I explain this, I hear uh, from a lot of business management students, why do I have to take financial accounting? I hate this. I, I'm never going to use this. Um, you know, and the reason why I picked on business management students is because the vast majority of students in a business school uh, take business management. Um, and hopefully you'll see why, um, you know, why you as a business student have to take financial accounting and managerial accounting, okay? And yes, it is being covered here in Math for Business and Finance um, as an introductory level. Now, of course, students who are taking math applications that are doing things like vet tech and, uh, you know, in the medical, you know, unless you go into the administrative side of those professions, you know, you're never going to see this again. So. You know, this is just maybe additional information for you, okay? Um, but for any students who are in any kind of a business curriculum, this stuff is important. It's the foundation, okay? So, why financial statements? And I had said because it's a report card for a company, okay? All right, think about it like this. Here you have the CEO, or, you know, you, you know, if it's not a public company, you know, the owner of the company, right? And the, basically, the or if it's a, an, uh, a big company, you might have a, a board of directors, right? Um, and when you look at a, a company, you kind of can think about it in, in three different terms, okay? As an overall view of things. Um, you have operations over here. You have sales and marketing over here, and you have your accounting and finance over here. Okay, now 
here's the thing. Business operation, I mean, yeah, business operations, you know, you're t we're talking about those who are taking business management. You know, in sales and marketing, you know, you're, you're talking about those who are in the curriculums for marketing because they become sales directors and that type of thing. And, of course, over here in accounting, you have your accountants. And anybody who is going into, like, finance, um, which would be... Uh, people who are, let's say, vice presidents in banks, loan officers, um, brokers, uh, you know, mortgage brokers, you know, they might be involved in, you know, they would go into the financial, uh, into the finance curriculum, all right? So generally in a business, you're going to see the accounts, you generally don't see the people in finance, but if you're in one of those uh, industries, banking, mortgage, you know, uh, that type of an industry, you're going to end up taking finance. So those are the degrees that are associated with, you know, these areas of the business. Now, here's the thing. The CEO, you know, or the owner, the board of directors, I mean, they have some knowledge, but of course, they're not specializing in business management, and they're not specializing in marketing, and they're not specializing in accounting. Why? Because they're running the business and, you know, I mean, think about it. To get a degree in management, uh, marketing, and accounting would take you, you know, a good 10, 12 years. Okay. Um, they're running a business. They're not there to collect degrees. That's why they hire people that have those specialties. Now, um, when it comes to uh, the way the, the business works, what you have is, is you have you know, your sales and marketing over here, and they produce the sales. And when they produce the sales, that work goes over to operations. And once they make the sales, they kind of like wash their hands of it, you know. Um, you know, I got, I brought in an order for, you know, 20 tables that need to be made, okay. They hand it over to business, you know, uh, over to operations, and it's up to the business management uh, people, right in order to make sure that those tables are, are produced and once you know they could be sitting there they're twiddling their thumbs and have nothing to do until you know sales and marketing you know you know create something so really the two these two do not have to talk to each other okay I mean business management all they're doing is just waiting for the order sales once I get the order you know that's all that I'm concerned with it's up to you to produce the product okay so they don't talk to each other, right? but when you're sitting in meetings, they do talk to the CEOs, right? The owners or the board of directors, right? So they have to be able to communicate with the CEO and, and uh, you know, the owners, okay? But they don't really talk to each other. Right? Now, what's the function of accounting? And this is why accounting is so difficult. Right? Well, accounting, you know, they create those financial statements. Okay. Now, yes, in financial accounting, you're going to learn a little bit about how to put together financial statements. Okay, but that's so that you have an understanding of what is on your balance sheet and your income statement. Why? Because it's the report card for the company. Okay, um, when you these financial statements are created, you know an analysis is being done, which tells whether the company is doing good or bad or you know where it needs improvement where there's problems so on and so forth so what ends up happening is is the accountant you know he has to create the financial statements and he has to be able to talk to the you know the business manager okay um, about what's on the financial statement right and he also has to talk to the salespeople so he has to have a knowledge of not only accounting but business management and he also has a knowledge of you know, sales and, and marketing. I mean, sure, the accountant isn't going to create the billboard ad, okay? You know, whereas the sales and marketing person will create that billboard ad. But when that ad is put up for the duration of time and the cost and the data that's collected on it, you know, the accountant has to know all of that stuff too, not just the sales and marketing people, right? So the accountant not only has to know the financial aspect of the business, but has to also know you know, uh, the business side, the operation side, and the sales and marketing side, and they're reporting to the CEO, owner, the board of directors, okay? So that's why the accounting curriculum is the most difficult curriculum, right? And uh, if you've heard, 
me before, um, you've heard me say, tell you that when I went to school, um, uh, when my graduating class was 476 uh, graduating students, okay? When I first enrolled as an, a freshman, 150 enrolled as accountants, all right? The, re the rest were in business management and in sales and marketing. By the time I graduated, only 30 out of that 150 um, actually became accountants. All the rest had gone into the business management or sales and marketing, okay? Because it's so difficult, right? So what we have here is financial statements that are being created, okay? And, you know, once, you know, on a certain level, you know, for a very, very small business, yeah, um, financial accounting can get the job done but there's a lot more to it and that's why you need the the accounting curriculum but when i say it's a report card for the company let's just you know realize that you know the ceo how does he measure what you're doing you know they you know it's in reports and analysis everything that happens in a business is create is turned into numbers okay and those numbers are then you know, looked at in order to be able to make, you know, determinations as to what directions to take, what actions need to be be taken. Um, for example, let's say um, in sales and marketing. Um, let's say last year there was $100,000 in sales, okay? And this year, for whatever reason, the sales and marketing uh, director decides that we're going to have a, you know, buy one, get one free sale, okay? And... Let's say um, that this year, for the same period of time, and let's just sit, call this May, okay? May of last year, he did 100000 And this year in May, um, because we had a buy one, get one sale, there was 200000 in sales, okay? Now, that looks pretty impressive, okay? And when he goes and he talks to the CEO, he says, wow, I made $200,000 in sales. You know, that's up 100% over last year year over year okay and you know really when you first look at it that is impressive okay you know that buy one get one really brought in the sales well you know the account you know he sits there and goes yeah okay you know yeah your sales went up to you know 200 uh, 200,000 but we're losing money okay why because if our gross profit is only say um, 25% on the product, okay, we're losing money. doesn't matter how much, uh, you know, that you increased your sales, okay? Our bottom line, you know, you increased our sales to 200000 but you gave away 50%, all right, where we're only making 25% profit on it. So, you know, yeah, you did this wonderful thing, but, you know, we're losing money. And that's where the, you know, the accountant comes in, all right, and the account has to be able to, you know, discuss that with the sales and marketing people, has to explain it to the CEO. And it's the same thing with business management. Um, you know, if in business management, let's say you had, you know, let's say you're a banquet facility and you have a, um, this year you have a, well, last year you had a function that had 2,000 people in it. Okay. And um, you decided to, as your wait staff, Last year, you had one per one wait staff for every eight people. Okay. Well, you know, this year, and let's say this, uh, you know, for this 2,000 people, let's say that's a $50,000 contract. Okay. You know, well, this year, you know, you're sitting there and you're going, ah, oh, well, maybe I'm going to try one in 10, you know, one wait staff for every 10 people. Now, notice that means that, you know, that person, that one person is not a, you know, is going to be less effective because let's face it, it's easier to take care of eight people than it is to take care of 10 people. But due to cost cutting, quote unquote, um, they decide to staff one in 10. Well, you know, as the, the banquet goes on, blah, 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 you know, yeah. Um, when it came to, uh, you know, the bank was, was finished and, you know, you made that sale for $50,000. And when we looked at our financial statement, okay, 
when we look at our income statement, it shows that um, for our expenses, our expenses are down a little bit. Why? Because we don't have as much payroll, all right? Which means we had more profit, all right? Our profit went up because we had less in payroll because why? We, we didn't staff as many people, right? So that business management person, he's sitting there going, oh yeah, we're, you know, we're doing wonderful, you know, our, our profit is up and blah, 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 and that's what he's telling the CEO. But the account is sitting there going, yeah, that's nice, except we lost the contract, okay, due to poor quality, right? There were too many problems, right? Uh, the people weren't getting their food on time. The food was cold. You know, uh, things were being dropped. It was just a, a fiasco. And they, they, next year, we don't have that $50,000 contract. So next year on our sales, we have $50,000 less, right? So, I mean, that's the, the function of accounting. And that's the function of, you know, our financial statements. They are the report card for the company okay and you know just like you're you know when, and the reason i use a report card because you can remember back to the time when you had a report card you know and you got an a you know you got a c and then you got a b and everybody's you know uh, patting you on the back and then you went up to you know you got an a and you know you're doing really well and then that last you know that uh, at the end of the year you ended up with a you know a D and then it's like oh what happened okay well you know this is the same exact thing except with companies um, you know they're a lot less forgiving so this is the reason why we have financial reports okay um, and uh, why anybody who is in business management or in marketing or any of the business curriculums they have to take those those subjects and that's why it's all covered right because of it being the report card for the company and yes in business for math and finance here this is a high level okay so for this particular subject um, and over the course of these videos in the theory you know we're going to treat it from a little bit higher level and yes you did you know yeah supposedly we're going to read in other words this is what it looks like and we're going to analyze, meaning uh, we're going to have apply some ratios. We're going to interpret. We're going to see a little bit of trends, but realize that it's just an introduction to what's going on, all right? And it doesn't get very, you know, it doesn't get a lot, very de in depth, in depth um, of the subject matter. You know, that will be for future subjects as you go through your your curriculums, but understand that it applies equally to business management and marketing or any any of the business curriculums okay it's important that you understand this so take that time and get it under your belt all right so with that i'm going to stop here and then uh, pick up in the next video and we'll actually start getting into the meat of the chapter